so you can see me driving in my wonderful convertible on a beautiful day. And, uh, sorry, you just slipped. How you doing there? <laughs> well, I'm just leaving the Bible study that I teach on Saturday mornings, and we were learning about, um, we're reading in the book of John, which is the Gospel of John, and we just learned about John the Baptist, a different John, and how he was preparing the way for Jesus, and how he gave up two of his disciples, and I, I don't know how many times I've ever noticed that before, and I've read the book of John, I don't know how many times, but I never noticed that um, Andrew and John, the Apostle John, who wrote the Gospel of John, are the two disciples that were actually followers of John the Baptist. He was already baptizing with water, and when someone did that, uh, it was a practice that was symbolic that um, whatever that person who was doing the baptism believed in, if you allowed yourself to be baptized by them, that meant that you also believed into whatever they believed. And what John the Baptist was baptizing, um, the belief of, was that a Messiah was coming and to repent for uh, the forgiveness of sins. And so when he saw Jesus, the first thing he does, this is in John chapter 1 and 2, the first thing he says to Jesus is, look, the Lamb of God. And there was a practice that was going on at that time that uh, with the Jews that uh, both in the morning and at night, a lamb had to be sacrificed for the people's sins um, so that God would overlook their sinfulness and still have a relationship with them. Because obviously, if God is holy and you sin against him, um, then that's death. And because life is in the blood, there had to be a blood sacrifice to get life back. And it sounds cruel, but it isn't. It's What's really cruel is to sin against um, a um, loving God who loves you. And um, I'm not quite sure if that horn was for me because I'm, I'm not doing anything wrong. <laughs> anyway, um, so it's really important to note that the first time that John sees Jesus, he calls him the Lamb of God. So not only was he the sacrifice for their sins, but it also uh, had told them in the Bible in Isaiah that the Messiah who would come would be a sacrificial lamb for the people of Israel. And so it's just really important that that's the first recognition of Jesus was that he was the lamb that had been promised as the Messiah for people's sins. So, it's really important that we know who Jesus is. Jesus is God. He's the uh, sacrificial lamb for our sins. And um, so it's important that more than anything, you know who it is that saves you. And Jesus' um, teaching in John 8, uh, 24, which we're going to be getting to later since we are studying the book of John right now. Um, he's talking to the Pharisees and he tells them that except that you believe that I am who I say I am, you will remain in your sins. And of course, if you remained in your sins, um, then you would die and be apart from God or go to hell instead of to heaven, uh, both of which are physical geographic places. And we're going to be talking about that too, that heaven is real. It's not just a fantastical idea. And so is hell. And so it's really important that, um, oh man, there's like a little, um, fair going on. I got to show you guys this. This is really kind of neat. <laughs> it's a little art festival, I think. But anyway, I took you out of the slot. Hold on. There. Okay. So I'm sitting at a stoplight just so you know. Um, but anyway, so it's just really important that we know who Jesus is because he said that apart from you believing that I am who I say I am, you remain in your sin. And they said, well, then who are you? And that is the right question for all of us is ask Jesus who he is. And then in John 8, 58, he tells us um, his name is I am. And if you go back to Exodus 3, 14, that's where uh, God says, I am that I am is who you're to say has sent you when um, asked who is sending you. 
uh, tell them I am, for this is my name to be remembered for all generations. So Jesus is claiming the name I am in John 8, 58. So he is basically claiming to be God. It's really important that you believe that because, again, in verse 24 of chapter 8, he says, except that you believe that I am who I say I am, not just that I'm a teacher or that I'm a prophet, uh, uh, both of which he is, but more so, he is also the Son of God or the very nature of God himself. And he even uses God's name, I am. So that's my uh, Bethy Bible devotion today. <laughs> You're having a good time over there. Uh, is that you really know Jesus for who he, he says he is. And he says he's God. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I'll see you again in my next video. Bye, 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 bye.